My name is Neil. I'm the pastor here at City Church. And uh, first off, let me just say it's really good to see you. Say hi to your neighbor. Go ahead and say hello to them, whoever that may be. Look both ways. You can say hi to people. Hi. We love to start off every message with uh, really corny jokes, and so that's what I'm going to do. My favorite childhood memory is having energy. Remember that? Remember those days? Yeah. How many of you take naps? Go ahead and raise your hand. Power naps. Wow. We are a tired church. Children are asked, who's their hero? Dad, why is he considered your hero? Because he's brave. Who's he afraid of? Mom. <laughs> if you want to take a nap at home, tell your kids to wake you up in 30 minutes so you can clean your house. All the parents listen. They will be as silent as possible to make sure that you don't wake up. These are kind of like helpful tips today. It's my wife's birthday tomorrow, and she's been leaving uh, jewelry magazines all over the house, so I bought her a magazine rack. <laughs> That's not a helpful tip, is it? Ladies? Does anybody have magazines anymore? I don't know. All right, well, I get to talk about one of my favorite subjects today, which is living from calling, to be living your life from a place of calling where God's actually put a calling on your life and you live that out. We're talking about being spiritually alive and vibrant and having this, this new life in Christ and being full of his spirit and living out day after day, being spiritually alive. One of the best ways to do that is to live out the calling that God has on your life, what he's placed on your life. About eight years ago, I was at a church conference, and when I was there, um, there was a time of music like what we just had, and one of the pastors came up on the stage and said, you know, if you want to come up front and just uh, worship God up front and just, you know, like there's a lot of room up there, and I just felt like I was supposed to go up front. I didn't know why. And I got up there, and we're singing the songs, and during that time, the Lord just started to reveal some things to me that he's been making me kind of uncomfortable in my current life, where, where I was at. And then he started showing me some difficult people that he's put in my life on purpose, because the next thing that he said that I felt like he put on my heart was, I'm calling you to start churches. And, uh, and I'm like, man, this is, you know, this isn't at all the part of the plan, um, I'm really comfortable where I'm at. Uh, most of my life was just amazing. There were some things that I felt a little, you know, like at ease. And the Lord just put it on my heart that, I'm, Neil, I'm calling you to start churches. And they showed me the Mississippi River. And I'm like, so it's not even like I don't get to leave the Quad Cities. And <laughs> we've got to start churches there. And so he just began to reveal that to me. And um at that time, what it meant to me was leaving your job, selling all everything that you own, and to go start churches. And so that's what God invited me into. And so I cried <laughs> as I was in that worship service for quite a while. And finally, I just said, okay, God, like whatever you want to do. And I said, if you're calling me to start churches, um, you better tell my wife, Amy, because she's going to need to know. <laughs> and so through prayer, uh, Amy actually about three or four months later decided that God had revealed to her that this is part of our calling together to, to start churches. And that's how City Church began. It began from God calling us into that. And uh, like I said, just like leaving everything to follow and pursue God's calling. But I can tell you throughout those years, throughout the last six, seven years, my relationship with God and the, the vibrancy of my relationship with God has grown dramatically because I said yes to the call. And I constantly come back to God called me into this. You know, during really hard times, especially 2020, <laughs> God, what are you doing? I always come back to 
God called me into this. If he called me into this, then that means he's going to give me the power, the encouragement. He's going to prepare the way. He's got plans. And this is really where we become the most spiritually alive is actually pursuing the things that God calls us into. To go both feet and, okay, God, this is what you've called me into. A lot of us in the room find ourselves in situations like, like what I just shared where you didn't really expect that. You know, maybe you find yourself uh, parenting foster kids. Maybe you find yourself um, working at a job that everybody else is frustrated with the job and has left, but you're still there because God's called you there. Maybe you find yourself being a parent, and you're like, I never signed up for this, but God called you into that. I think what big one is, is neighborhoods. You know, have you ever had that, like, just this urge in your heart that this is what I'm supposed to be, this is where I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to invest in this neighborhood. All the other neighbors move out of town, but you're in that neighborhood because God has called you there. And this is really where we become spiritually alive. Our life becomes bigger than ourself, where we're completely having to depend on Jesus we're having to depend on his encouragement in our life, and we can come back to that calling. And so that's what I want to talk to you guys about. This is like my favorite subject because I love being able to share what God can do when you step into his calling on your life. Ephesians 2 is uh, our chapter that we're going to be looking at in the book of Ephesians. We've been studying this book, and uh, we're going to be looking at uh, verse one today, but before we do, what I'd love to do is just, uh, let's just pray. You guys want to pray with me? Lord, with this, uh, we just set aside this time, um, and I just choose to get out of your way, Holy Spirit, whatever it is that you want to say, whatever it is that you want to do in here. Lord, I just pray that even, even as I'm speaking, that you would just start to reveal um, the call that you have on all of our lives. And so, Lord, we just invite you to, to speak directly to our hearts. We open up our hearts. We open up our minds from the busyness of this morning and what's going on tomorrow. Lord, we just choose to just step into this process right here, right now. We just take this moment right here and just want to hear from you, God. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So we read Ephesians 2, 1 last week, but I th think it goes hand in hand. You kind of got to read the whole uh, 10 verses together to get a really good picture of what Paul's talking about. So we're going to be looking at 2, 1, and then we're going to read to 10. Ready? Three of you. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the... Ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So Paul says that all of us walk through this time and this period of our life where we actually followed the things that would gratify our own flesh. We weren't following Jesus. We were actually following like our fleshly desires, which are not of God. And so he says, we've all been there following the kingdom of the air. The kingdom of the air is uh, the enemy, Satan, following his plan for our life. And all of us lived there amongst at one time, gratifying our cravings and our sinful nature and following the desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. Can I get an amen? amen. It is by grace that you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms of Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show his uncomparable riches of his grace, expressed in the kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. This is not of yourself. It is a gift of God. So Paul explains this dead life. And he says it's by grace that you've been saved. This is not of yourself. And I think one thing with uh, Christianity that's really hard is that concept. 
Does anybody else struggle with that? Because, like, if you do something for me, I want to do something back so that I'm, like, good enough, so we're, we're even. I don't like it when people, I, I move my entire household by myself because I don't want to help you move, okay? <laughs> don't call me. That's one thing just off the table, like, I'm not helping you move because I move myself, Okay? <laughs> So you do the same. No. <laughs> I was never helping move. <laughs> okay. I may fib a little. I load up the truck by myself. <laughs> it stinks when your family's in church, doesn't it? So they just call you out and everything. Okay. I, I try to move myself. try really hard. But by the way, don't, don't call me to help you move, okay? But we struggle with this it, with Christianity because it's like God did this amazing work on the cross once and for all, and then it's by grace that you have been saved. And it's not of yourself at all. It's completely dependent on the work that Jesus Christ did for us. And that's kind of hard to just receive that, isn't it? It's like when you show up to Christmas with your family and they're all giving you gifts and you're like, but I didn't buy you anything. So uh, thanks for all the gifts. And this is what Jesus does is he, he packages up the salvation of saving us from this life that was dead and says, I want to just freely give it to you, receive it and be blessed. Receive that today. It's not by anything that you've done. It's not by your past life and all the good works, the, you know, jump-starting somebody's car this week. God just loves you because he loves you. He's just, he's so for you. And he just, he invites you to just receive this free gift of eternal salvation just because he loves us that much. He just lavishes his love on us. Our response is to receive. That's our response in that. To say, yes, I, I receive your, your amazing love for me, Jesus. And so Paul starts with this dead life. And then he keeps going. And he says, it's by grace that we've been saved, not um, through faith and not by yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. So no one can even boast about our amazing works that we've done to finally receive salvation from Jesus. None of us can share anything that comes to the table that, is in, that compares with what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross that was a free gift to each one of us. I was thinking about that verse and how funny it would be if we gathered on Sunday morning and just shared all of these amazing things that we've done for God all week long. And then, like, you know, you try to top one another. Like, well, God really, uh, God finally loves me because you know what I did this week? And we just constantly are just boasting about all of our good things that we're doing for God. Like, that'd be really weird, wouldn't it? Okay, I'm alone. No one can boast. It's only by Jesus Christ that we receive this brand new life. It's a brand new start a brand new life simply because of Jesus. And then Paul goes on to say, since you have this new life, he says, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works. We are God's handiwork. Would you say, I am God's handiwork? I am God's handiwork. No, Neil is, no, it's joking. <laughs> That was a joke. Say it again like you believe it. I am God's handiwork. His handiwork. You are God's handiwork. He put workmanship into your life. He gave you gifts and talents. He created you perfectly by his design. Handiwork in the Greek actually means the poetry in motion of God. 
that we are poetry in motion of God. That what Jesus Christ did in us, he actually created this way that we can uh, be poetry in motion in our day-to-day life. We're his workmanship. We're his handiwork. I love in Psalms 139, David talks about this and says that he knit us together in our mother's womb. That he's putting the pieces together of how he's designed you and, and given you uh, these eyes and this hair and made you tall, made you short. That God has created us with specific design and we are his workmanship. And then he goes on to say that we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared for us in advance. It's kind of hard to hear from Paul when he says, you can't do anything to receive salvation. It's simply by the grace of God, right? It's not by your good works. And then he goes, but you're created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Does anybody else struggle with that? So when, when we receive salvation, God completely gave it to us for free. But then out of this salvation, out of this brand new life, he's created us to do good works, which he prepared for us in advance. Before the beginning of time, God had prepared works that he created you for in advance. And then you're on the scene to walk out his poetry in motion. That's cool. And that's where life comes from. It's one thing to go, okay, I started following Jesus, and I believe in Jesus Christ, and, you know, I started this new life. I get baptized, and you do that type of stuff, and that's really, really positive, and that's really good, and it's such a great start. But I'm telling you, you become spiritually alive when you step into the calling that God has on your life, and you devote your life to it. And say, you know what, like, God, you created me for something, and I believe this is what you created me for, so I'm going to step into it, and I'm going to say yes to you, Jesus. Because what it happens is you're completely dependent on the Lord, and it's not of your good works. It's totally the Lord working through you. It's his poetry in motion. And this is what Paul invites people into. I want to be spiritually alive. Receive the free gift of Jesus Christ, and then live out the plans that he has for your life. It's both and. It's both and. God has given each one of us a call that he's called us into where he wants to equip us, to encourage us, where he uses your gift and your talents. And he calls us into it. I'd love to do is look at the Bible as four people in the Bible that God called. And the first one is Paul. Paul was called to follow God. And the way that Paul was called, the person that wrote this book that we're reading today is he was actually working for God, and he was dead in his religion. And so he's working really hard for God, dead in religion, and God knocked him off of his donkey. You can replace donkey with something else. God knocked him off his donkey, and then God completely called Paul to a radical new life in Christ. He was religious, he was doing all the right things, but God called him into a new relationship with Jesus. And called him and said, Paul, I'm going to use you. Peter's another one that was called. Peter was doing his thing. He was working as a fisherman. He's on the shore. He is loading his boat up. And Jesus comes on the shore and says three words that radically changed Peter's life. Come, follow me. And that was Peter's call. Is a one time, come, follow me. And what did Peter say? He said, yes. And he followed Jesus, and and Jesus completely radically changed his life from a fisherman for fish to fisher of men. And Peter's actually the rock that the church was started on. From come, follow me. Sounds really simple, doesn't it? But Peter stepped into this calling, and he followed Jesus. He said yes. Another person that was called was David. David was the youngest of of all, the, all of his brothers were real stout and real good-looking guys, and Samuel was coming to David's house to pick the next king who was going to be the king of Israel, the next one in line. And his dad didn't even invite him into this, this ceremony that somebody in their household was going to be the next king because his dad didn't even see the calling that David had on his life. And so Samuel goes into their house and says, hey, 
none of these guys are the next king of Israel. Do you have any other sons? Well, we got David. He's out in the field, though. And so they called David in, and Samuel goes, you're the next king. So you see with David, sometimes God uses other people in our life to go, hey, I see this in you. I see your heart. I see you're really great with kids. I see you have a heart of prayer, a heart of worship. And he calls us that way. What I love about that story is so many people overlook David, but God calls the overlooked. I just love how the disciples, it says that they were normal, ordinary men. They were uneducated, but God called the disciples to start the church. God calls the overlooked. The last person I want to talk about is Jonah. Jonah was called by God. He was called to go to a town called Nineveh, and he decided, you know what? I'm not going to do what you called me to do, but God doesn't give up when we say no. He just chases us down, doesn't he? Has anyone else experienced that where God just chased you down? You can't escape his call. And so Jonah tries to flee, and he gets swallowed by a big fish and has to spend the night in a fish. Because when you try to run from God, it stinks, doesn't it? I've been swallowed by some fishes. We're right next to the Mississippi. So there's big catfish in there, guys. I'm telling you, don't swim in the Mississippi. <laughs> but, so Jonah runs from God, but God chases him down. And then Jonah finally says, Yes, is this what you've called me to? Then I guess I'll do it. So you can see with all of these stories, sometimes it's like you're just going through life in your normal direction. You know that you have gifts and talents, and so you're using them, but they're not really glorifying God. You haven't handed them over to God. That's Paul. That's Peter. He was good with leading people, but he was, he was doing his thing. And then Jesus comes to him and says, would you use your gifts and talents for me? And both of those people said yes. And sometimes we're going through life and we don't really know where our direction is. And sometimes we have people in our life that say, hey, I see this in you. I see this in you. God's called you into this. And a lot of us try to run from this overwhelming call on our heart. And God's just like, no, you can't escape me. You don't get to get away. I'm going to chase you down. God calls everyone, every single one of us, have a calling that the Lord has put on our heart. And a lot of times you find yourself in, in places that you didn't know you are going to be going. You find yourself starting businesses you didn't know needed to happen. You find yourself investing in, in people that you didn't even know you loved. And then you start investing into them, and you're like, oh, wow, I, I actually love people. This is the call that God has. This is really where spiritual, being spiritually alive happens. And we step into that, and we just say, yes, Jesus, whatever it is you want to do. There's two calls that every single one of us are a part of. The first one is, is you are a part of the body of Christ. You have all been called into the body of Christ. Every single one of us is part of the body. God uses us as his hands and his feet. The Bible says so, so many times that he's given you gifts and talents and abilities to move his kingdom forward. So we're all called into the body, every single one of us. And we'd love to have you as part of this body. If there's something, if you have a gift or talent that you're like, man, I'd love, to, I'd love to play a part in that. You don't have to do anything, but I do want to invite you. You are totally invited to do anything you want around here. Unless sing, if you can't. <laughs> there, there is protocols. <laughs> But God's called us to be a part of the body. So we have people, hospitality, greet you at the door that are able to hold the door open and smile. We have people making you coffee. Thank God for people who make us coffee. Amen. 
We have people that are with our kids. We have people that are um, on the stage and in musical abilities. We have people at the back, sound tech. Give it up for these guys again. Did I already say that? <laughs> Next Sunday when you come in, that sound booth will be a third of the size because uh, we are making room for more chairs. That's where they're going. So I feel a call for you to help after church if you want. But yeah, you're a part of the body. And so like filling out that connection card and just saying, yeah, I'm interested in helping. We will get in touch with you and, and help you get started in that. And lastly, I just want to say the last call that we're all invited into is a relationship with Jesus Christ. We're all invited into that. That's a call that he's put on all of our hearts, this, this longing to know him more, to know God more. Not to know more religion, but to know Jesus more. We all have that calling. There's this desire of our heart where the Lord is just calling us. The Bible says that he stands at the door and knocks. We let him in. I just love that picture. For every single one of us, he knocks. He, he says, will you let me in? One thing that, uh, as, as you, if you feel a calling in a specific area of life, there's, there's a really great way to continue that. So even if it's a ministry, even if it's something that you're doing in life, if you feel a specific calling in that, one thing that you can do is continuously build your relationship with Jesus and trust him in the process of that. I can tell you the call that I had on my life eight years ago has not went as I planned at all, at all. Like so many different different, you know, roads, and you're like, God, is this really? It hasn't went as planned. But my relationship with Jesus has grown through that time. So I'm not focused on the call that he has on my life. I'm focused on my relationship with Christ, and he's going to fulfill that call. So don't get hyper-focused on, oh, i got to fulfill this call, and this is how it's going to happen. I'm telling you, set yourself up for disaster. It's really hard to work through that. Actually, just focus on Jesus. Let him be the prize, and then the call will happen. As your relationship with Christ grows, everything else around you becomes spiritually alive. Has anyone else experienced that? Go ahead and raise your hand. Yeah, very cool. There's testimonies there. So I just want to close with, with two quick calls. The first one is this. Is, um, I'm going to invite you to say yes again to Jesus. You know, whatever that is that he's put on your heart, and maybe it's years ago and you need a reminder, oh, yeah, he called you into this. Just to say yes again. Yeah, Jesus, I'll, I'll do what you called me to do. I'll continuously pursue you. So that's one call. And, and I, I really feel um, there might be some of us in this room, and this was like a long season of my life, just running from his call. And nothing would work. Like everything was a dead end. And I'm like, man, just so frustrated. And it was really God just, you're running from my call, Neil. And so if, you, if you've been running from God's call, I just invite you to say yes again. Just turn back around. Don't, don't make him send a big fish. Just say yes today. And the last call is, if you've never put your hope in Jesus Christ and said yes to Jesus as a new relationship in him, and to say, yes, I need your forgiveness. Yes, Lord, I'm saying yes to what you've actually invited me in to uh, today. Just say yes. Say yes to his call on you. Don't send him the voicemail today. Say, yeah. Yeah, I want to start following you today, Jesus. Would you stand with me if you can? Let's just pray. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Hmm.
And we say yes, Lord. Yeah, we say yes, Lord. Say yes to the cost. Yes to just surrendering our life over to you. Huh. We just say yes, Lord. I just want to encourage some of you in this room that have been doing what God's called you to do for a really long time and um, you've just been really discouraged. I just want you, I just want to encourage you in this moment right now that, that the Lord sees that you've said yes and things don't always go as you planned and, and um, but he is just creating this poetry in motion of his love through your life. And so, um, Just fix your eyes on Jesus this morning, the one who called you. He's working all things out for, for your good and for his good. Be encouraged this morning. So I encourage all the parents too that God has just called you to, to be amazing parents. He just wants to encourage you. You're doing a great job. You, you're, um, you're doing exactly what he's called you to do. If there's anyone in this room that just wants to put their hope in Jesus Christ uh, for the very first time, that just say, you know what, Jesus, I believe what you did for me on the cross that you forgave me of all my sins. And then not only did you die on the cross once and for all, but you actually rose from the grave. And I choose to just take faith in that and take hold in that, not because of the great works that I've done, but because you just love me so much and you're passionate about me. So just say yes today. To just say yes to that call that he's been, he's been knocking on your door. He's been calling. He's, he's been pursuing you. And just say yes today. If you're saying for the very first time that you want to say yes, I just invite you to just raise your hand right now in this moment. Just to raise your hand. Just say yes. I want to start following Jesus for the very first time. Amen. Very cool. Amen. Yeah. I just want us to, for everyone else that uh, just has been following Jesus and you're, you're wanting to pursue more of what he's called you into, I just invite you today to just verbally say from your heart, yes, Lord. Just to say, yes, Lord. Just go ahead and say that out loud. Just tell him yes. Whatever, whatever he's just been placing on your heart, he's, he's put these things on your heart that he's invited you into. Just say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. We thank you that you hear our hearts, Lord, every single one of us. It's not too much for you to, to take all these yeses, Lord, but you know specifically what we're saying yes to. And so, Lord, I just bless that right now in Jesus' name. Let's just pray a blessing over that, that nothing would try to snatch that away our yes this morning, that we would just say yes to you today. We'd say yes to you tomorrow in all the times that you've invited us into what you've called us into, that we just continuously say yes, Lord. Make us a church of yes people. And we just say yes to your calling, Lord.